the sun is a plant ecology plant ecology includes the the types of uh, plants that are present in the ecosystem that is uh, various types of plants like mesophytic plants xerophytic plants and the hydrophytic plants apart from that one there are various types of plants like uh, which are growing in the uh, haline conditions or we can say acidic soils and alkaline soils and also in shady places and the under bright light also like various types of plants are there but basically we can say three types of plants are there mesophytic plants xerophytic plants and the hydrophytic plants and uh, these plants are uh, present in their specific habitats and they got adjusted to those localities such that they are adapted to that environmental condition as uh, they are surviving in that environment they are undergoing some modifications in their structure that is leading to the settlement or for establishment of those plants in that particular areas so that uh, based on that one we can say that three types are there then coming to the uh, next part of this one that is uh, ecological succession so here succession means uh, the same place is colonized by different groups of uh, organisms in the course of the evolution that is called as succession okay succession is a pro is a long uh, duration of uh, process we can say it may take sometimes hundreds of years or sometimes uh, thousands of years uh, to be completed and here the one group of plants which are first colonizing an area is called as an pioneer group of plants or uh, the one which is occupying as a last one or which got established in that particular area is called as a climax community so pioneer community and the climax climax community will be there pioneer uh, between the pioneer and the climax community various uh, groups of communities will come and uh, those are called as a serial communities the one which are coming in between them are called a serial communities so here uh, each and every group of community is called as a seer each and every community is called a seer and starting from pioneer community to the climax community many serial communities will come in the process and when you are coming to the uh, primary and uh, second succession are there that is there are two types of successions the primary and the secondary succession primary succession means uh, if any uh, bare land or bare rock is occupied by a new group of community of plants or uh, we call it as a primary succession and uh, that area is not suitable for the growth and development of the plants that's the reason why the time taken for establishment and um, making that plant that land fertile suitable for the uh, growth of plants and animals so that is the reason why this uh, process of primary succession is very slow primary succession is very slow and uh, the second one is a uh, secondary succession secondary succession means uh, the succession which uh, taking place in a area where already that area was colonized by various other group of plant communities so that means uh, before that uh, this group of communities some other group were present but because of any calamities or any natural reason or anything so the group of plants get perished so that uh, soil will be fertile in nature so a new group of uh, community can easily come and occupy that area and that area is generally fertile in nature that's the reason why when compared to the primary succession the secondary succession will be very fast so these are two types of successions which are there here and uh, here in the course of the plant succession we can say that lichens have very important role to be considered why because uh, in most of the cases the pioneers have the ability to colonize and bare bare land or bare rock so that in most of the cases the lichens are acting as a pioneers and uh, the climax community includes huge trees climax communities include huge trees that is from lichens to the huge trees there are many uh, in between these two there are many plant communities which are coming and going so that is what we call it as a succession is uh, taking place and uh, apart from this one there are two types of uh, other uh, other methods we can say that is called as hydrarc and the xerarc hydrarc means uh, the succession which is starting in a water body so that is leading to the conversion of that water body into a mesic condition 
that is uh, hydric condition is converted into a mesic condition that is one type of uh, succession the second type of succession where we call xeric succession where um, the xerophytic land or we can say that a desert land is converted into a mesic land that means water may be the type of succession ultimately that uh, place is converted into a mesic type of uh, environment or mesic land so that is what uh, the change which we observe from the uh, hydra condition to mesic land or uh, the zera condition to the mesic land then there is one more aspect to be considered here that is uh, ecological services okay here we are uh, surviving the human beings plants and animals all these types of uh, living organisms are very much present in the uh, present on the earth in the same environmental condition so but we are uh, particularly if you talk about the animals and human beings so we are getting uh, oxygen from the environment and we are releasing carbon dioxide into the environment so that means uh, we are surviving based on the uh, uh, environmental conditions so here uh, what is the value of uh, the environment of which we are depending upon or what is the value which we are spending to get the pure environment from the uh, atmosphere or the one which we are surviving so for that purpose uh, the, we are get, for if you consider that purpose we say that we are getting all these uh, things freely from the environment but here if we, if we estimate the value actual value or some pri price tags have been uh, if, if any price tag have been fixed to that uh, environment uh, which is uh, helping in the survival of a better living of the human beings so that value will be very high when compared to the, the, the domestic product or whatever the expenditure the governments are expending on the human beings so in that aspect there are four uh, services that have to be considered one is called as cultural services recreational services uh, supporting services and the provisioning services so all these services are uh, there we, that means uh, various types of uses that we are taking from the environment are completely kept under these four services then here uh, we are getting the food we are getting the food means uh, which part of the plants which we are consuming as a food means mostly the fruits and the fruits are produced as a result of fertilization and before fertilization there is one important uh, process that has to take place that is called as a pollination process and here uh, in the ecological services we have to talk about uh, the pollinators most important pollinators are the insects in that insects also honey bees are having an important role as a pollinator that means if honey bees are there they will help in uh, pollinating the uh, pl flowers and uh, those flowers are uh, giving rise to the fruits which is used as a food materials for human beings that means uh, here honey bees that pollinators are one of the important ecological service which we are getting and uh, uh, in the uh, US countries like where uh, the number of uh, honey bees are going on re reducing so that they started growing the forest areas or grassland areas or gardening is increasing such that uh, the honey bees production can be increased so what is the use of uh, doing uh, such thing is if the number of pollen grains uh, sorry number of pollinators are increased so that uh, those pollinators will come to the agriculture field and uh, they will help in the pollination process then uh, the ecological service uh, in terms of the carbon dioxide we know that carbon dioxide is having some important role why because so here uh, animals are releasing carbon dioxide into the environment whereas plants are utilizing that carbon dioxide and by using this carbon dioxide they are preparing food materials so the plants will take up this carbon dioxide and uh, prepare food materials and uh, here these food materials contains energy inside them they store the energy and when we consume that uh, food materials which are produced inside the plants we also get that means the human beings and also animals will also get that energy that is they are deriving that energy from them here uh, if you take about the photosynthetic process we know that uh, carbon dioxide plus water give rise to carbohydrates that is glucose and oxygen is released along with some energy along with some energy so here uh, in this equation part so how much uh, when carbon dioxide is taken how much amount of uh, what's the weight of uh, glucose that is coming out is a uh, 180 grams of glucose is coming out and here uh, 264 grams of carbon dioxide plus 
108 grams of water is used. Here 193 grams of uh, oxygen is coming out. So this is a proportionate relation between them. And uh, this glucose molecule which is formed here is useful in conversion or uh, production of various types of uh, 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 biomolecules or various types of organic molecules which are required for that uh, human being or uh, animal. So that means it is giving rise to various other polysaccharide molecules. So that means uh, 180 grams of uh, glucose is giving rise to polysaccharide molecule which is a 162 grams that means 264 grams is giving rise to 162 grams of polysaccharide that means uh, when uh, 1.63 grams of carbon dioxide is fixed it leads to the formation of 1 gram of a polysaccharide molecule that is a sugar molecule. So that is a relationship between the carbon dioxide and the amount of uh, food material that is synthesized in the plant. So this is about the role of carbon dioxide in the uh, uh, in the process of uh, providing food materials to various types of living organisms which are present on the earth. Then coming to oxygen. So what is the importance of oxygen? When we talk about oxygen, here is, uh, plants are releasing this oxygen which is uh, purifying the environment. Simply to say plants are taking the toxic uh, gas that is carbon dioxide and releasing a pure, pure gas called as oxygen. In that process they are purifying the environment. So we know that there are various sources of carbon dioxide which are released into the environment. One is uh, mainly by the industries and the combustion of uh, the engines in the automobiles. So that amount of uh, carbon dioxide which is coming into environment is taken by the plants and they will convert uh, that one into the photosynthetic process and release the oxygen. That oxygen which is coming into the environment is purifying the environment. So that is a way how this uh, oxygen is also as an ecological service is useful for the uh, goodness of the environment. So this is about the brief characters related to uh, the eco eco uh, plant ecology, the ecological succession and the ecosystem services. Now let us come to the uh, some of the important questions or the expected questions. Uh, uh, simply to say the pattern of questions which are going to be asked in the MSET exams. Okay, question number one. One of the following is a xeromorphic adaptation. Options CAM pathway, two dissected leaves, three absence of cuticle, four absence of mechanical tissue. Okay, here it is the character is related to the xeromorphic conditions. So morphic means morphological character. Zero means the morphological character which is adapted by an xerophytic plant. So here uh, first one is the CAM pathway. What is the CAM pathway? CAM pathway is a crassulation acid metabolism. It is a method of carbon dioxide fixation uh, shown by crassulacy family members like in Opuntia. So this is uh, what is happening in this CAM pathway means as we know that uh, this is exhibited by the xerophytic plants and in xerophytic plants the availability of water is less and the temperature will be more. So in order to reduce the rate of transpiration the stomata remain closed during daytime and open during night time. So such type of uh, stomatal movement is called as scotoactive stomatal movement. In that process they perform the photosynthesis by a mechanism called as a CAM pathway. And second one is dissected leaves. Dissected leaves are present in the submerged plants. Submerged plants means the plants which are present inside the water. That means the plants which are present in the inside the water means it is a characteristic feature of hydrophytic plants. And absence of cuticle. So absence of cuticle is also the character present in the submerged plants. So that is also a character of hydrophytes. Third one absence, fourth one absence of mechanical tissue. So here Hydrophytes are not uh, erect plants. They can't stand erect in most of the cases. So that there is no need of a special uh, tissue which is providing mechanical strength to them. So that the fourth one is also the character of a zero fight, uh, sorry, hydrophytic plants. Out of the four characters, the presence of CAM pathway is a xeromorphic adaptation exhibited by most of the xerophytic uh, plants, particularly the succulent xerophytic plants. So question number one, the correct answer is one. Question number two, which of the following is a pioneer of bare rock succession? Options one, bryophytes, two, lichens, three, bacteria, four, higher plants. Okay, 
Now let's come to the options. Bryophytes. Bryophytes are called as amphibians of the plant kingdom. These are uh, uh, not the pioneer in the uh, succession of a bare rock, but they will come the after the lichens. And uh, second one, lichens. Lichens is a symbiotic association between uh, a algal member and a fungal member. They have the speciality that they can uh, survive on the bare rock. So in the process of uh, survival, they convert that rock into soil particles by some chemical reactions such that gradually that bare rock is uh, converted into soil and uh, fertility of the soil will be increased. Then bacteria. Bacteria, most of the bacteria are uh, uh, pathogenic and some of them are useful also but they are not the part of uh, pioneers in the succession. And uh, fourth one, higher plants. The higher plants will come in the later stage of succession but not as a first group in the succession part. So from the given options we can say that lichens are the one which will uh, uh, occupy or which will colonize the bare rock and make that uh, uh, soil or make that place suitable for the growth of uh, next group of plants. So question number two the correct answer is two. Question number three, the most important pollinator for agricultural purpose is options 1 honeybees, 2 butterfly, 3 moths, 4 reptiles. In the biotic uh, pollinators, there are many types of biotic pollinators like uh, most important one is uh, insect pollinators. If the insects are helping in pollination, we call it as entomophily condition. Entomophily. In that uh, entomophily also, there are various types of insects which are helping in pollination and uh, most of the insects are attracted because of beautiful color of the petals or the flowers and uh, the smell of the flowers. Some insects are attracted because of sweet smell of nectar and in, there are some uh, insects with, like beetles. They are attracted to the flowers because of the rotten uh, uh, meat smell. Okay, likewise, the various other characters are there related to attraction of the insects towards the flowers. But apart from all these characters, uh, which insects are mostly useful for pollination in the agriculture fields is honeybees. So question number three, the correct answer is one. Question number four, for the production of every one gram of dry organic matter, how much of carbon dioxide is fixed by plant? Options one. 2.64 grams, 2 1.93 grams, 3 1.72 grams, uh, 4 1.63 grams. Okay, here there is some small relation to be considered here that is 264 grams of carbon dioxide when it is fixed, it is given as to 180 grams of glucose molecule and that glucose molecule will be converted into various types of organic matter which is uh, giving uh, which is a weight of 160 to uh, 162 grams so that uh, the 264 grams of uh, carbon dioxide is used to produce 162 grams of organic uh, uh, molecule such that uh, to produce 1 gram of organic molecule 1.63 grams of carbon dioxide is fixed question number 4 the correct answer is 4 question number 5 Arrange the following levels in the ascending order of biological organization. 1. Organs. 2. Protoplasm. 3. Tissues. 4. Cells. 5. Organism. The given options are first one 1, 3, 4, 2, 5. Second option 4, 5, 1, 3, 2. Third option 2, 4, 3, 1, 5. Fourth option 3, 4, 5, 1 and 2. Okay, here uh, uh, various levels of biological organization have been given here. So in that from the given options we can say that the least one is the protoplasm. The least one is protoplasm. That is second one protoplasm. And the protoplasm is uh, present inside the cell. So that next level will be cells. That is fourth one next level is cells and uh, a group of cells is called as tissues so the next level of organization is tissues that is a third one then a group of tissues will form various organs in any living organism so that uh, next organization will be organs 
and all the organs will form into a complete organism so that the next level is organism so that uh, from smallest to the highest or the levels are organization from simple to the complex first two protoplasm four cells three tissues one organs and five organism so question number 5 the correct answer is 3 question number 6 arrange the following plants of pond in the order in which they occur from bottom towards water surface options 1 valisneria 2 salvinia 3 utricularia 4 sagittaria so from that the uh, the four four options have been given first one 1 2 3 and 4 second option 2 1 4 and 3 third option 3 4 1 and 2 fourth option 1 3 2 and 4 so here uh, the in the in the question they had given four plants that is uh, valisneria salvinia utricularia and sagittaria we know that in hydrophytic plants all the four that have been given are hydrophytic plants in hydrophytic plants there is a classification those are uh, uh, that means uh, the hydrophytic plants are categorized into five groups here so those are called as um, free floating hydrophytes that means the plants which are present on the surface of the water the first one is a free floating hydrophytes the one which are present on the surface of the water and these plants have contact only with water and air why because the root system does not uh, penetrate into the mud present below the waters so here uh, many examples are there like pistia icornia and also salvinia like plants then the second one is uh, suspended rooted hydrophytes when you are saying suspended that means the plants are present inside the water and uh, the roots of that plant are fixed into the mud present below the waters that means the these plants have contact with the uh, soil and also water but not with air okay then submerged suspended hydrophytes these are the plants which are uh, completely present inside the water and the root system is not fixed into the soil that means uh, these are the plants which have contact only with water only with water neither they, ha they have contact with the uh, soil nor with the air then rooted hydrophytes with uh, floating leaves there are some plants like nymphia where uh, the root system is fixed into the mud present below the water and uh, the leaves have long petioles which are passing through the water the leaf lamina will be floating on the surface of the waters so that means uh, this is a plant which is having contact with all the three structures that is uh, contact with soil water and also air such type of plants are called rooted hydrophyte with floating leaves then fifth one is amphibious plants amphibious plants means the plants which are uh, partly present in water and partly present above the waters so this type of plants are called as amphibious plants like typha and limnophila along with sagittaria also so these are the various uh, uh, categories of plants in hydrophytes okay then in this uh, let's take the examples here that have been given here so the question is uh, the arrange the plants uh, that are occurring from bottom towards water surface that means lower to the top we are saying here out of this one the first one which is coming is a valisneria because valisneria is a plant which is um, rooted and suspended or we can say that a submerged plant submerged plant then coming to next one is a uh, utricularia utricularia is a plant which is submerged and suspended utricularia then coming to the salvinia plant which is coming here free floating and uh, the last one is a sagittaria which is amphibious plant 
so this is a correct arrangement that is uh, 1 3 2 and 4 is the correct arrangement from bottom to the top so question number 6 the correct answer is 4 question number 7 in cim plants the stomata options are non functional 2 open at night time 3 open at day time 4 are totally absent okay here are cim plants that is succulent xerophytes are the plants which are exhibiting crassulacean acid metabolism it is a method of carbon dioxide fixation in the succulents here in these plants as, as already we discussed that um, in order to reduce the rate of transpiration the stomata will open during night time and close during day time that is scoto active movement is exhibited that means the stomata are very much functional but they are opening at the night time so question number seven the correct answer is two Question number 8. Which of the following play a primary role in soil formation from bare rock? Options 1. Bryophytes, 2. Pteridophytes, 3. Lichens, 4. Big trees. Okay, here uh, the out of the four plants that have been given here, the question is related to the pioneers of the ecological succession because uh, the one which are colonizing the bare rock and converting that one into soil. So that function is done by the pioneer group of ecological succession that is lichens and after lichens the bryophytes will colonize that land and after bryophytes the pteridophytes will colonize and thereafter finally the trees will be colonizing the land uh, that same area and it is considered to be the climax community. So from the given options uh, lichens are the one which will colonize the land or colonize that uh, uh, bare rock and make that soil fertile. So question number 8, the correct answer is 3. Question number 9, pick out the wrong statement. 1. Many ecological adaptations are genetically fixed. 2. A number of ecosystems in a large area constitute a biome. 3. Roots are totally absent in utricle area. 4. Floating leaved hydrophytes are hypostomatous. These are the four options that have been given here. Let's come to first option. Many ecological adaptations are genetically fixed. Yes. So apart from ecological uh, point of view, genetical point of view is also very much important in the ecological adaptations. Second one. Okay. Here if you consider a biome, biome is a all eco, uh, biome includes all types of ecosystems which are present on the on this land. So that uh, a number of ecosystems are uh, present in in the one biome which is nothing but the earth third one when it is related to utricle area utricle area is a submerged suspended hydrophyte in which the roots are absent and it is having a one special feature that it's an insectivorous plant that is uh, it depends upon insects for nitrogen then fourth one the free floating uh, the free le floating leaves containing hydrophyte the uh, this is related to a plant called as nymphia in nymphia the leaf, the leaf lamin is uh, floating on the surface of the water and uh, the upper epidermis is exposed to the sunlight that is air whereas inner surface or uh, lower surface is uh, always in contact with water. So the one which is always in contact with water does not have stomata whereas the one which is having contact with air has stomata. That means the adaxial surface has stomata so we call such a condition as epistomatous condition but not hypostomatous condition. So out of the four given statements, fourth statement is wrong. Question number nine, the correct answer is four. Question number 10, one of the following is not a character of hydrilla. Options one, presence of air and chyma. Two, xylem not well developed. Three, waxy coating on the epidermis. Four, presence of stomata. Here this question is uh, related to hydrilla plant. Hydrilla is an uh, submerged suspended hydrophyte. Submerged suspended hydrophyte. In this plant as it is an uh, hydrophytic plant here the special type of uh, or we can say that special type of parenchyma is present that is air and chyma tissue is present. Then here we have to discuss here about uh, uh, air and chyma here. One point to be noted that 
Here, aryngema is a special type of parenchyma in which uh, large intercellular spaces are present between the cells. And these large intercellular spaces will help in uh, buoyancy, that is floating of the plant in the waters. So that aryngema is present as like in other hydrophytic plants. Then, second one, xylem is uh, not well developed. Xylem is a vascular tissue. Here, this xylem is concerned with the conduction of water from the lower parts of the plant body to the upper parts of the plant body. But when you are talking about this hydrilla plant, hydrilla itself is present uh, inside the water completely. So there is no need of transportation of water from root to the other parts of the plant. Why? Because each and every part of the plant will absorb the water by a process called as diffusion. So that xylem is uh, poorly developed or not well developed in hydrilla is poorly developed. Then third point is a uh, waxy coating on the epidermis. Okay, here uh, there is a uh, small coating like structure or we can say that waxy coating is present on the epidermis. So this is also not a character related to hydrilla. Why because, okay, sorry, this character is related to hydrilla. Why because this coating is uh, helping in the protection of this uh, hydrilla plant. So that uh, waxy coating is present. Then last one is presence of stomata. Okay, one other important character of uh, hydrophytic plants is uh, either absence of stomata or if the number is less, if uh, the stomata are there, they are present only uh, if the leaves are uh, present above the waters. And here, as uh, the hydrilla is a submerged suspended plant, so there the stomata are completely absent. But here it is given as a presence of stomata. So that uh, the fourth statement is incorrect related to hydrilla. So question number 10, the correct answer is 4. Question number 11, what are called the lungs of the world? Options 1. Biotic factors of ecosystem. 2. Atmosphere and its gases. 3. Plants and phytoplankton. 4 animals and zooplankton. Okay, here the question is uh, lungs of the world. The one which are uh, releasing oxygen into the environment, those are called as the lungs of the world. So we know that uh, plants or the structures or plants or the living organisms which are releasing this oxygen into the environment and they are taking the carbon dioxide from them. So that's why they are acting as lungs. Then coming to phytoplanktons. Phytoplanktons are the small plants which are living inside the waters. There also they are taking carbon dioxide inside and releasing oxygen. That is, uh, they are purifying the aquatic environment in which they are surviving. So because of these uh, reasons, we can say that plants and phytoplanktons are the lungs of the world. So question number 11, the correct answer is 3. Question number 12. Water medium is enriched with dissolved oxygen by options 1. Floating hydrophytes, 2. Amphibious plants, 3. Submerged macrophytes, 4. Phytoplanktons. Okay, here uh, in the water, oxygen is there, that is, uh, oxygen is dissolved in the water. So, that is uh, increased uh, by the macrophytes which are completely present inside the water. Macrophytes means the Little large sized plants which are present inside the water are completely present inside the water will uh, enhance the dissolved oxygen. So that uh, from the given options, submerged macrophytes is the correct answer. So question number 12, the correct answer is 3. Question number 13, Skyophytes grow in options 1. Salt water, 2. Sandy water, 3. Shade of big trees, for open sunlight. Okay, here uh, cyophytes are the plants which are growing in shady regions, which are growing in the shady regions. That means wherever the shade is present, they will survive in that area and uh, whatever the light which is available to them, that uh, light is enough for performing photosynthesis by those plants. So that these are the plants which are growing in the shady regions. From the given options, the first one is salt water. Salt water, uh, the plants which are uh, not the part of salt water, sandy soils, that is samophytes. And open sunlight means uh, heliophytes. So, shade of big trees is a 
करेक्ट ऑप्शन बिकॉज सयोफाइट आर द प्लांट्स विच आर ग्रोइंग इन शेडी रीजियंस क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टीन द करेक्ट आंसर इज थ्री क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन ए मीसिक क्लाइमैक्स कम्युनिटी इज फॉर्मड फ्रॉम ऑप्शन वन जीरिक सक्सेशन ओनली टू हाइड्रिक सक्सेशन ओनली थ्री ऑल सक्सेशन लीडिंग टू मीसिक कम्युनिटी फोर मीसिक कम्युनिटीज आर फॉर्मड इंडिपेंडेंटली विदउट एनी लिंक टू एनी अदर सक्सेशन आलरेडी वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन द प्लांट सक्सेशन और एकोलॉजिकल सक्सेशन दट इज जीरिक कंडीशन विल लीड टू मीसिक कंडीशन दट इज जीरोफाइटिक कैरेक्टर और जीरोफाइटिक लैंड और एरिया विल बी कन्वर्ट इन टू ए मीसोफाइटिक एरिया एंड इफ द adaptation so our succession is starting at the hydric condition in a water body that also convert into terrestrial land that is mesic condition that means uh, both the xeric and also hydric both of them are ultimately converted into mesic conditions so from the given options we can say all successions lead to mesic community question number 14 the correct answer is 3 question number 15 Study the following diagram and uh, identify A, B, and C. Okay, here, which of the plants mentioned below occupy the positions A, B, C in the pond? Options A, Lemna; B, Hydrilla; C, Limnophila; two, A, Nymphia; two, Pistia; C, Utricularia; three, A, Utricularia; B, Sagittaria; C, Salvinia; four, A, Lemna. B limnophila and C hydrilla. Here the diagram that have been given here is a pond that have been given here. So here in this one we know that the various types of uh, plants are there in the pond, like uh, based on the position or the place. So here they are taken C plant here, B somewhere here, and uh, A at the top. A is at the top. and here uh, based on the type of hydrophytic plant we have to identify them starting with uh, the limnophila hydrilla and lemna plants are considered here so here in this one lemna is a plant which is a free floating hydrophyte free floating hydrophyte and second one the hydrilla which is a submerged suspended hydrophyte so b can be considered as hydrilla plant and the third one that is c Limnophila is the one which is uh, considered as uh, uh, amphibious plant, which is partially inside the water, partially above the water. So it can be considered as a limnophila. So A, B, C plants are lemna, hydrilla, and limnophila. So from the given options, uh, first one with A, lemna, B, hydrilla, and C, limnophila are correct. Question number fifteen. The correct answer is one. Uh, Question number sixteen. Which of the following releases oxygen directly into atmosphere? Options: cellulitic bacteria, two pathogenic bacteria, three cyanobacteria, four chemosynthetic bacteria. So, in the given four options, first one cellulitic bacteria. This is a bac. This is a bacteria that means which is a prokaryotic organism. Which is acting on the cellulosic part of the uh, cell cell wall. Second one, pathogenic bacteria, which is the uh, one which is uh, acting or uh, surviving on the living host. So this is also prokaryotic in nature, so that does not release oxygen directly into the atmosphere. Then uh, cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria are nothing but uh, <clears throat> blue green algae. These are the blue green algae. so blue green algae are the one which are uh, releasing directly oxygen into the atmosphere why because these are photosynthetic these are uh, aerobic in their nature whereas fourth one chemosynthetic bacteria so these chemosynthetic bacteria are the one which are uh, uh, deriving the energy from the oxidation of uh, chemical compounds and uh, these are prokaryotic in nature so they cannot release oxygen directly into the atmosphere so from the given options cyanobacteria are the organisms which have the capacity to release oxygen directly into atmosphere so question number 16 the correct answer is 3 question number 
greatest threat to pollinators is options destruction of habitat two environmental pollution three overuse of pesticides four overuse of artificial fertilizers here uh, the question is related to the pollinators pollinators are the organisms which are helping in pollination that is transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the flowers and uh, when pollination is taking place then only the fertilization will be carried out which is leading to the formation of uh, fruits and seeds so here the question is related to great threat to pollinators so whatever the options that are given here all of them are threat to the pollinators but which one is having the more severe effect on the survival of the pollinators so let's come to the first one destruction of habitat so when the natural living place of that uh, pollinator is destructed so the pollinators will go off from that place or we can say that they change their habitat or some of the pollinators will die off so second one is environmental pollution of course uh, pollination also have some effect on the rate of uh, the pollinators which are available in that particular area third one your overuse of pesticides so pesticides are the chemicals which are uh, applied on the crop plants for killing the pests so here uh, some pesticides will have effect on the pollinators also then overuse of artificial fertilizers so this is also uh, having some effect on the pollinators but out of the four which one is having severe effect means the destruction of uh, the habitat that is place of survival is uh, having the highest threat to the pollinators so question number 17 the correct answer is 1 question number 18 which of the following is called functional unit of nature options to one population two ecosystem three biome four biosphere the first one is population population is a group of uh, individuals belonging to one species present in one area is called as population second one ecosystem ecosystem is a unit of uh, the ecology or we can say that it is one of the unit present in the biome or the biosphere and biome and biosphere have been given here which form the large unit or the entire uh, uh, survival place of a living organism is called as a biome or the biosphere so that which one is a function unit of uh, nature means ecosystem question number 18 the correct answer is 2 question number 19 find the correct match column 1 and column 2 so in the column 1 first one grassland column 2 xeric habitat second one amphibious plant limnophila third one halophyte sandy soil fourth one scaly leaf opuntia so here column 1 and column 2 have been given in the first one column 1 first one is grassland grassland is the one which is not related to xeric habitat because grassland is a mesophytic character whereas in the column two it is given as a xerophytic habitat so that xerophytic habitat is incorrect the second one is a amphibious plant amphibious plants means the plants which are uh, growing partly inside the water and partly outside the water so that best examples are limnophila sagittaria and typha like plants then third one is halophyte halophytes are the plants which are growing in the saline air but not in the sandy soil but here it is given as sandy soil that is wrong sandy soil means the plants are called as samophytes sandy soil means samophytes fourth one scaly leaf in opuntia opuntia is an uh, succulent xerophytic plant in which the uh, stem is modified into phylloclade and it is storing it is becoming fresh in its nature so why it is uh, converted into a leaf like structure why the stem is converted into leaf like structure means because in these plants the leaves are modified into spines to reduce the rate of transpiration but here it is given a scaly leaf so that is incorrect so from the given matches the amphibious plant limnophila is a correct match 
क्वेश्चन नंबर 19 द करेक्ट आंसर इज 2 क्वेश्चन नंबर 20 स्टडी द फॉलोइंग लिस्ट लिस्ट 1 ए रूटेड सक्युलेंट बी स्टेम सक्युलेंट सी लीफ सक्युलेंट डी नॉन सक्युलेंट लिस्ट 2 1 नीरियम 2 एलो 3 ओपेंशिया 4 एस्पारागस 5 राइजोपस द करेक्ट मैच इज 1 a1 b2 c3 d4 second option a2 b3 c4 and d5 third option a3 b4 c5 d1 fourth option a4 b3 c2 and d1 so from the given options we have to identify the correct match okay first one in the list one a is a root succulent so root succulent means the plant which is a storing the food materials or water and become succulent or fleshy that means the root is storing that uh, materials and becoming fleshy this type of character is present in asparagus plant then b stem succulent here yeah, stem succulent is a xerophytic plant which is uh, in which the stem is becoming fleshy stem is becoming fleshy due to storage so this can be seen in open shea plant then c is a leaf succulent the xerophytic plant which in which the leaf become fleshy due to storage of water and the water is stored in the form of hydrophilic mucilages so this is present in a plant called as aloe then d is non succulent non succulent is also a xerophytic plant in which it is not storing the water inside the any inside any part of the plant and uh, this is a plant called as true xerophyte and it is a perennial plant so why we are calling it a true xerophyte means it does not absorb excess water uh, when water is available that means uh, it will use only minimum amount of water either it's a rainy season or any other type of season so that's why we call this as a uh, true xerophytic plant so uh, from the given options the correct one is a non succulent is one that is a nerium so this is a correct match related to this one a root succulent that is four asparagus b stem succulent three opentia c leaf succulent two aloe d non succulent one nerium so four three two one is a correct option question number 20 correct answer is four